Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Alexis Garcia and Ed Carson here to break down the market action in today's trading session for Friday, November 24th. And we'll also take a look at how the week turned out. And Ed, a pretty muted day for the markets with the shortened trading schedule, but stocks locking in a fourth straight week of gains on this Black Friday. Yeah, another nice day, another nice week, really nice month, obviously, for the market rally. want to take a look at a few stocks, Novo Nordisk, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor, and First Citizens Bank shares. All right, we'll take a look at those three stocks shortly. But first, let's check in on the major indexes, starting with the NASDAQ, that finishing lower today, one-tenth of a percent. The S&P 500 up fractionally today. The Dow up three-tenths of a percent. And small caps leading the way with the Russell 2000 up six tenths of a percent. So, Ed, let's get right into it. Let's take a closer look at the NASDAQ. We had that power trend kick in on Monday. That composite is inching closer towards those July highs. What's your take on the action here? Yeah, it's been really strong action uh, throughout. We really haven't had two, we haven't had two down days in a row uh, throughout this rally. Uh, and most of those declines have been pretty modest. As you say, we entered a power trend on Monday, and there's a number of criteria of that, but basically it's just a sign that maybe this rally is something really meaningful. Uh, it doesn't always have to work out that way, but it's something, you know, when we're in a power trend to maybe be more aggressive, uh, look, you know, look to hold on to stocks a little longer, still follow your sell rules, don't buy extended, but just have a little bit more of a bullish mindset. Uh, but yeah, so... For the week, another week of gains. We're now getting above the September highs. We just have these summer highs on the major indexes. Uh, a lot of lot of strength. Uh, the only only real issue is that leading a lot of leading stocks are extended. Uh, but it's been it's been a really uh, really good performance and really good time for most traders. Right, and you and the IBD Live team have been talking a lot about you know maybe it might be constructive to see a little bit of a pullback here, but. Is there any reason to not feel bullish right now? There's really not. I mean, always something could come up. And I look, we are in a confirmed market uptrend. And the thing is, we are, that a trend. You expect that trend to continue until it doesn't. You know, if the if the if we start seeing some negative signs, whether there's news or if there's not, uh, you know, you have to take that into account. Uh, but there's a lot of reasons. Treasury yields have come down. Inflation concerns and rate hikes seem to be off the table. Uh, earnings have come in reasonably strong. So there's a lot of positive, a lot of positive things out there. A lot less uncertainty. It feels like again, that could come right back in a, in you know in in very little time. Uh, but right now, there's a lot of reasons to be bullish. All right. Well, let's take a look at the S and P 500 then. Similar action here, getting up to that July high of around 4,600. What's your thoughts here? It's the same kind of thing here. Uh, obviously. A lot of the techs have been driving this, but there is some more breadth to that, and we'll see that with some of the other indexes. So it's just nice to see again with the Nasdaq. Again, we when the rally started, uh, you know, when the Nasdaq had its follow through day, the S and P was still below its 200-day line. In fact, all the other indexes were below their 200-day lines, uh, and then but we kept on clearing it. Then the S and P did, and then all the indexes started getting above their 50-day lines, and then they got above their October highs, and then they have now gotten above their September or late August highs. So. Uh, these resistance levels that we thought, well, watch out, folks, it just keeps on blowing right by them, uh, all these indexes. So really, really nice to see. All right, Ed, let's hop on over to the Dow and get your thoughts here. Uh, again, there's not much more to add on this. It's like they're all showing this strength. Uh, while the Dow hasn't outperformed, you can look at this RS line versus the S&P 500. It's lagged, but it's still uh, it's still holding up in this rally. And there's just there's some breadth, certainly among big caps uh, right now to uh, to attract investors. All right. Well, you mentioned big caps, but let's take a look at small caps over at IWM. That's the iShares Russell 2000 ETF. A good week here for small caps. And, you know, I really kind of liked what our markets writer Michael Larkin wrote about in our Market DM newsletter this morning that small caps have really been the fly in the ointment here when it comes to this market rally, but good action this week as it comes closer to that key resistance level. Yeah. So it, it, it last week it vaulted above the 50 day line and it briefly got above the 200 line. Then it backed off. 
it still had a really strong week last week. Uh, another solid performance this week, and it's just getting up there. So you can see there's been market breadth. This is a sign of that market breadth is improving. It just you want to see it keep on going. You want to get it above the 200-day line. It doesn't actually need a lead, but you'd like it to not be such a severe laggard. And small caps have really struggled for a long time. Just going to go to a weekly chart just for a moment here. And you can see how the RS line, it's, you know, this has been falling. It's nowhere near the highs, whereas the other indexes are starting to approach, you know, not only their summer highs, but getting close to their all-time highs. Small caps have been in a long, long slide, uh, you know, beyond, beyond what uh, the rest of the market has been doing. So breaking above that 40-week line would definitely be a positive development for this rally. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's take a peek at the 10-year Treasury yield. That's up uh, rebounding off of two-month lows this week. Yeah, two-month lows. So it was actually hit, you know, during the week. It came back up today. That didn't really hit the market. I think, the, you know, it's well below the 50-day line. Uh, blow, you know, get blow these levels. Uh, you know, if the yield can sort of steady here, I think the market could probably handle that. Obviously, if the yield keeps on coming down, uh, that might be a tailwind, but it also might signal a recession. So, uh, or recession fears. But this, this is sort of fairly positive as long as we don't see a big serious rebound up to those levels. And you know, that's always possible if people look ahead and go, "Wow, we're going to have to refinance a lot of debt next year uh, at higher interest rates." Maybe that'll get folks, but right now the treasury yield has been a, has been a tailwind uh, for this month, and that that's the that's probably the biggest reason why we've had this market rally. All right, let's take a look then at some market breadth indicators. And Ed, how are you feeling about the breadth in this market right now? Well, you know, look, we can see like on QQQ the the big cap things that's at new highs or 52 week highs, so that's really been leading, and we know that. Uh, the breadth, while it hasn't been great, I, I think the market leadership has been relatively strong. And that's why I like to look at the NASDAQ 100 equal weight ETF, QQEW. Uh, that's not at new highs, but it's getting up to those September highs. You know, this is a reflection of, say, this is still big caps. I mean, they're not maybe, you know, it doesn't weight NVIDIA and Tesla and Apple as much as they do overall. But there's still a lot of big names in here, but you you see this has performed pretty well. And that's a reflection of maybe that there's broad leadership or at least broad enough. Uh, and, you know, I think investors have seen that a lot of stocks, not just the Magnificent Seven that have had a strong November. All right, Ed, let's check in on some sector ETFs, starting with SMH, FanX Semiconductor. That's down slightly this week, about six tenths of a percent, but you know, hovering uh, around a buy zone here. Yeah, and this is a record high. I mean, this is not just a 52-week high, an all-time high. Uh, NVIDIA was down this week, but still in a buy zone. Uh, Taiwan Semi, we'll look at this week. It, it was down or flat this week, another huge component in SMH, but that's actually setting up, so that was sort of constructive. Uh, this has been acting very, very well. Uh, growth stocks have definitely been uh, on the forefront. All right, let's hop on over then and look at some software with IGV. A good week here, up about 1.8%. Again, clearing a buy point out of the base. Yeah, so again, nice action here. Microsoft's a big player. Next week, we'll get Salesforce earnings. That's a big, big company in there, but there's a lot of names. Uh, in this, uh, in in IGV and and beyond IGV, that a lot of software names have been really doing well. Uh, they were probably the real initial leaders uh, in in this sort of growth led rally, and they've continued to do well. All right, let's take a look then at industrials XLI. Positive week here, up about seven tenths of a percent, but really uh, four straight weeks of gains. Yeah, so this one was really the showing weakness, but you know, it bottomed with the market, but it was getting really, really struggling after after showing strong performance over the summer, bouncing back. We're seeing some names come up. Boeing has done a lot better after a long slide. General Electric is that is is at a buy zone, and there's a lot of others. So this is a sign that the breadth isn't just in in the in in the tech. I mean, there's there's other things. There's some retailers that are doing well. There's some travel names. You know, there's some financials. Uh, so there's a lot of things in there, and home builders have come back up. So it's not just a uh, tech story. Yeah, it's great. I was getting so excited. I uh, knocked a pen off of my desk here. But uh, you mentioned Novo Nordisk. So let's hop on over to that chart. Again, 
nice day today, clearing a buy point up 2%. And as you mentioned, on news that it will start selling its popular weight loss drug, Wegovy, in Japan as soon as this spring, potentially. What's going on here? Well, I mean, this is a way, this is the weight loss drug leader along with Eli Lilly. Uh, strong volume today. It'll end up below average probably because this is a half day. The market's already closed, but you can see that it was pretty strong volume. Almost got to e you know even volume for for a full session. So strong strong action there. Uh, it bounced off the 50-day line a couple of weeks ago. It probably offered a couple of early entries. Uh, breaking out today, it's not too extended from uh, the 50-day line. It was a flat base. Uh, you know, this has been trending higher all year. This is one of those game changers. I mean, this isn't just something nibbling on the edge, edges. We may look back five, 10 years from now and just say this changed just society. I mean, there's not, you know, this is, I, that doesn't mean that this stock has to go up from here or anything, but it's definitely one of those, this is a game changer. When we talk about can slim and new, obviously it's been rallying on this, but this is new. I mean, this is something fundamental uh, out there. Uh, you know, yes, diet and exercise are probably the way to go, but most people aren't going that way. And this is a this, no, big, uh, can really big topic of conversation around the Thanksgiving table. And as you said, you can really see it show up in the fundamentals here. We've seen accelerating earnings and sales going back for over a year now. Yeah. And, and this is huge growth for a company that's almost 500 billion. You know, this is not a biotech that just has one drug out there. Uh, they literally in Denmark have to adjust GDP figures, show them excluding Novo Nordisk because it is so huge that it's that it's distorting the growth figures for the whole country. All right. Well, hopefully uh, NVO <laughs> getting bigger while everyone else is getting smaller. Let's jump <laughs> on over to Taiwan Semiconductor, ticker TSM. Down slightly today, about seven tenths of a percent and setting up here. Yeah, it's not showing up on Marcus Smith right now, but this is a handle. It is it is high enough in the base. So this would be the buy point here. So even though we had a down week, in some ways that was constructive because now now we have a handle 101, 170. Uh, with chip stocks, they often rebound before the fundamentals appear. We always like to say, hey, fundamentals, they're really important. You want to see that. But sometimes you have to look at the estimates and going forward. And uh, something that happened here is on this day, Taiwan Semi came out and said, hey, October revenue was higher versus a year earlier. And that was a shift. And as you can see, sales have been falling for several quarters. And so that's signaling this is coming up. I mean, uh, and that's a turnaround. Taiwan Semi makes chips for NVIDIA, makes chips for Apple, Broadcom, Qualcomm. So they are at the forefront of that. And, uh, you know, not only is this a positive, you want to be watching it not because of just Taiwan Semi, but because what it says about is says a lot about what end demand is. It says a lot about about chip equipment demand. So this is a hugely important stock to watch. And it would be really good for the market if this did, did well. Oh, and you're on mute, I believe. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Wonderful. Uh, OK, let's hop on over to First Citizens Bank shares. That's ticker FCNCA. And for those that might not remember, uh, they got a big boost after they scooped up uh, a lot of assets from Silicon Valley Bank when that whole thing imploded in the financial crisis. Was that last year? I, time has no meaning anymore, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, Getting getting close here uh, to a potential buy point. Yeah, and you can see the enormous growth in the size. Look at how the gr earnings were and like the revenue more than doubled, you know, mm -hmm. between these quarters. And that's because of that buying up those assets. I mean, that just was a that was a game changer for them. And while all the other while regional banks are still struggling, financials this one broke out on that deal and has kept rising. Uh, it's had a nice consolidation here. Uh, you know, um, it it it's just below this buy point. You probably could have bought it today as it bounced off the 21 day line and was sort of getting above a short trend line, say, um, this is going to be our stock of the day. Uh, and so it's definitely one to watch in that regard. Um, so uh, it's it's bouncing back. Yeah, it, the relative strength line is held up pretty well. And that's after a huge move. So other financials are coming up, but this clearly seems to be is is among the very among the leaders because of its the big blowout uh, special you know sweetheart deal that he did in taking over that bank. All right, Ed. Now let's talk about what investors should do to prepare for next week. Uh, well, you know, 
look, you, the market rally is acting well, and you it's certainly, uh, and there's no real reason to not be positive on it. There's not a ton of buying opportunities. There are some. We're showing some things that are stocks that are in or near buy zones. So you can still be adding exposure, or you could decide, I'm going to buy new, more shares of this stock or new shares and sell something else that's lagging. So you can do that, some pruning, pruning your uh, portfolio and making, you know, just uh, setting it up for what's really working. But keep working on those watch lists. I mean, I just, I, I mean, I know I, I hammer that every Friday because it's like, this is what you can do on the weekend. You want to be doing that time to prepare, run those screens, make sure you're doing a wide net so you get all these things, the industrials and the travel and all those other things that uh, are setting up, but then really focusing on, you know, a handful of stocks that you really are interested in that are in buy zones or, or close to it. Uh, and maybe spending a little more time on those names and, uh, just taking it easy. You hopefully are heavily, heavily exposed. And so you can add a little bit more here and there, but uh, that's, that's what I think people should be doing uh, this weekend in the, in the days ahead. All right, Ed. Well, thanks so much. And that's it for today. We'll be back with more market analysis Monday morning, starting with IBD live. You can head on over to investors.com slash IBD live for all the details there. And we'll also see you back here Monday after the close. Ed, thanks so much for joining me today. And thank you all for tuning in. Have a wonderful holiday weekend.